John's question was, what about the implied vol versus historical vols? You know, we picked out a couple of stocks that we thought made sense only because uh, chart-wise, how they've been acting, uh, checking some vols, uh, they were relative, I think, uh, to uh, historical implied levels were very close to each other. Uh, when looking at uh, ratio spreads, what you want to do is obviously choose your universe of stocks that you're very comfortable with, go through them and uh, literally create a column on an Excel spreadsheet or something and put down all the historical vols and then just pull up whatever software you're using for your uh, option pricing modeling and write down the implied vols for the at the money in the uh, months that you're talking about. You notice we chose a month that was 39 days. Uh, we couldn't use December because this Friday's expiration, very little premium there and very risky premium there because only four days left. Uh, we don't want to go too far out in time because then that leaves too much of a variable of what can happen. Uh, more news, no more days, more news possibilities. Uh, we want to make sure that we're not entering into earning, any earning cycles when we're doing these kind of ratio uh, call or put spreads because as we talked about often, uh, earnings stocks that have earnings uh, the week of and two weeks out, all of a sudden volatility starts to creep up. That would be the wrong time to create a position like this. You want to basically look for stocks that uh, historical volatility is trading, um, uh, the implied vol is trading a little higher than historical. We don't want to look for stocks that's trading a great deal more than historical volatility because that normally means there's news. If vols are really way above historical levels, uh, the news is either not out yet or about to be announced, and you want to stay away from that. Uh, you know, a lot of people always said that you know sometimes you look at vol and in the old in the old crazy days uh, when vol was trading at a hundred, people would say, well, if it's historically trading about 80, 90, it's trading about 100, 110, would you sell it? More likely than not, yes. But if that same vol was trading about 300, they said, would you sell it there? I said, no, I'd buy it. And they said, well, how could you buy 300 vol? Because it will probably move at 600. Uh, so you've got to be very careful uh, to understanding why, why the beast is acting like the beast. Uh, understand those historical levels. Create, like I said, a column with the, your stocks, historical levels, and then line up the implied calls and puts and see if there's any opportunity there. Don't force a ratio spread uh, because, once again, you're putting on a position that if the stock has violent moves or becomes very volatile, obviously the options are going to become very volatile and you're going to be working yourself into a corner because now you're going to have to react and uh, do a lot of maintenance on the position. Uh, so yeah. Yeah. And you couldn't because it kept every day. It, every day. it would. Reverse, yes. Out. Yeah. Because it just kept moving, and you end up over you over trading a position, which if you look at it as time went by, you probably could have left a little bit okay. But what happens is when the vols expand, that creates panic, and you have to adjust. You just can't sit there and hope it's going to come back. Uh, remember we talked about we don't hope, we react. Uh, and what's happening here is when you do that analysis, pick those stocks that meet the criteria, uh, no earnings cycle. Remember, you want no earnings cycles in the month that you're putting on your ratio spread. Okay? You want to make sure that you're dealing with a stock where the implied is a little bit greater than the historical. Don't go looking for stocks that the implied is really a high percentage over the historical. Something's wrong there. There's news coming or something's pending. Uh, that's a good time to create a ratio spread. Now, you know, people put on ratio spreads or professionals put on ratio spreads when they think the market's going into a non-news period or a holiday period sometimes or a period in which the stock is just tired, a lot of movement. Now, a lot of times people say, well, how about the holidays? Can I do a ratio spread in the holidays? Shouldn't ball come down? Well, sometimes it's a mixed bag. What happens during holidays? A lot of people leave the market, don't they? Market's thin, what happens? The bid-ask spreads widen. Bid-ask spreads widen with less liquidity. What happens to movements? More exaggerated. More movements, more volatility. Volatility goes up. So there, there goes that theory. 